Hi, I'm Ifer, and today I'm going to draw a picture of my cat to show you how I've copic. First, you'll need some paper. I'm using a colored cardstock. Cardstocks, you don't need to worry as much about it bleeding through onto whatever surface you're drawing on. The benefit of using a colored paper is that you can use a white or light colored pencil crayon or gel pen or paint pen or chalk or whatever you're comfortable with to do uh, highlights and your lightest colors without having to paint over the area first with a darker color. This is useful if you have large areas of your mid-tone because that way you don't have to paint your entire thing. You can just do the highlights and the shadows instead. Next you'll need to choose your color palette. I tend to go with around three to seven colors. Five is a good number. In this piece I'll only be paying attention to the value of the colors. So how light or dark each part is. Um, because of this, I only need one set of colors here, and they'll all be representing the same hue. If you want your piece to have different hues represented, then you'll need to keep that in mind when choosing your colors. You'll probably end up needing more than one set of values, each with different hues. Depending on the piece, you may choose to do realistic colors. Because I'm not doing that, I have a few different choices. I can either choose to do a single hue and do everything the same color, just different values, but doing that tends to give a very flat look to your picture. Instead, I'm choosing a range of different hues. In fact, I'm going practically across the entire spectrum here. I've chosen to use yellows as my lighter colors and pinks for my mid-tones and blues for my shadows. This tends to give a very natural look because most light sources, especially the sun, give off yellow light. In contrast, shadows tend to have a much cooler hue, and so blue tends to be a good choice. You shouldn't feel constrained to those colors though. You can choose whatever hues you want and make them look good anyway. Just test all of your colors against each other. Make sure you've got a nice harmonious palette. Look up monochromatic, dichromatic, trichromatic, and similar color palettes for more examples of and ways to choose your palettes. Next, you need a subject. If your subject is liable to move or change color or shift or otherwise vary over time, do yourself a favor and take a picture. So after your subject has settled down and you've taken your picture, don't forget, the first thing that you need to do is you need to sketch out your subject. Uh, I'm using a hard pencil. I believe it's a 4H, I might be wrong, and the reason that you want to use a harder pencil is because Copics, when you go over pencil, you can no longer erase the pencil. So you don't want to use a, a B pencil, you don't want to use a soft pencil. Because even if you do your best erasing job, there's probably going to be a lot of residue. So that'll show through the Copics and there'll be lots of graphite left over. So if you use a hard pencil, not only is the color a lot lighter, but there'll be a lot less of the graphite to erase. And unlike a lot of other mediums, like pencil crayon and crayon and pen, where if there's a dent in the paper, it'll mess with your color. Copics don't do that. So it's fine if you end up with a dent through your paper from your sketch, because you're using a liquid medium and you aren't using a liquid medium that pools into the dents. So go ahead and use your hardest pencil here. Try not to press too hard because you still need to erase it. Once you've gone over your rough sketch in a hard pencil, if you need to refine it at all, use a slightly darker pencil and go over the finished outline. This will show up more than the hard pencil, so it should be easier to pick out which lines are your final ones. Once you're done your final lines, you want to erase it all. I know you just worked really hard on those lines, but you want to get rid of as much of that graphite as possible. 
erase as much as you can while still being able to see your outline. Once that's done, you can start laying in your color. I generally start with my lightest color and just block in everything except where you want to put in the highlights. I'm doing a picture with a lot of contrast here, but if you're doing a picture with a lot of mid-tones and you're using the colored paper with your whites, feel free to leave large areas of your subject uncolored. That's the benefit of using the colored paper, that you don't have to do as much work to get the same effect. You'll notice that I'm using a flicking motion to do most of my coloring. This flick can either be used to blend colors in a nice smooth gradient, or if you hold it at a more vertical angle, you can get a nice um, tapered line, which allows you to do small details and with very thin strokes. When doing a gradient, hold your marker at a lower angle and put it at the part where you want the gradient to be darkest. Put it down on the paper and then flick towards wherever the lighter area is. Repeat this, uh, varying the direction of your brush stroke, but keeping the start point at the darker areas and the end point at the lighter areas. You may want to overlap your strokes to make it less obvious where each one is. You can use the colorless blender to aid in this process, or if the whole area is darker, you can use a lighter marker to blend it in. When doing this though, you need to be careful not to overwork the paper. If you work it too much, you'll tend to get this blotchy effect, which you could probably use, but if you're not intending it, it doesn't look very nice. And my cat has moved. Thankfully, earlier in the process, we took a picture. So I'll be working from that for the rest of this tutorial. When coloring a dark area, remember that since Copics are additive, meaning that they get darker as you go, you need to leave spaces for wherever you want the highlights. If you want a lighter area, then you need to plan for that. You want to make sure that the, the base color that you're laying down is no darker than the lightest colors in that area. If at any point you make a mistake with one of your lighter layers, you can choose to darken your entire picture to cover this mistake.
we're getting near the end here. So now I'm going to start doing the white highlights using my white pencil crayon and my white gel pen. The benefit of doing this near the end is that you're less likely to accidentally color over your pencil crayon areas with your markers. So you can also use that possibility to your advantage. I'm not going to cover that technique in this tutorial. And that's it for the traditional section of this tutorial. If there's any interest, I'll go over how I'll take this raw drawing and turn it into a finished piece using digital means. But for now, that's it for me. Thank you for watching and good luck on your own work!